will happen on the outside. So no go with 19 and 6 in the season opener win as we look at the Chiefs starting lineups. As for this Boston University team, Walter White can fill it up. He had 27 in the season opener. Yeah, six three-pointers. He really does a nice job of, of scoring on the inside, scoring outside. And a lot of very nice complimentary players around him. 14 guys return to this team. We'll get into that later. Get old, stay old. Adama Sonogo now in his junior season set the tone to the campaign. Yeah, I think he understands that he needs his teammates. It's not just about him. And sometimes when you are chosen as or picked as the preseason player of the year, you start to think, hey, it's about me. But you need, you're only as good as those guys around you. You need your guards to understand that. There's Walter White, a sixth year star for the Boston Terriers. He could have transferred. He could have moved on in the current climate of college basketball. He has stayed committed to Joe Jones. Yeah, and it's a testament to, to a, a, another one of three Connecticut guys, kids from Connecticut on this Boston U team. But you're right, testament to Joe Jones and what he's teaching his kids. Meeting number 57 between these two teams, old Yankee conference foes. We are set to go as it's Sonogo for UConn in the white, Nevin Zink for the Terriers in the red. Tech goes to Connecticut. And it's important for UConn to get off the right way because they're in this building, first game of the year. You always want to make your fans happy. That ball has to touch number 21's hand at some point. To Newton, off to Alex Caravan. Offensive board to Sonogo. And Adama gets the Huskies on the board. That's one way to get a touch. I, I really, listen, you got to play basketball, but I'd really like for UConn players to say, you know what, this is our guy. We're going to start with you and see how they guard it. That's a travel on Fletcher Tynan. How about that? The preseason. Player of the year, nice work. See some hands in there, get some contact. Up with the left, beautiful move by Sonogo. Huskies without Jordan Hawkins, who's in concussion protocol, and Sonogo is picking up everybody. Well, I love that. You have to push. You have to look at that primary break, and they have guards, UConn, at multiple spots. RJ Cole, wonderful job, great career here. The time he was here, but now you have more options to be able to deliver that ball down low. And on the timer. And a foul called on Jonas Harper. This is just an awesome post up because you seal your man. But it's also being on the same page with your guards. They know where you where your sweet spot is. You give them a little target where that hand is down low. Nice bounce pass. Look, you've got no Jordan Hawkins with a concussion, Andre Jackson with a finger injury, Samson Johnson with a foot. How much does that just make Sonogo as he commits an offensive foul on the flip side? How much does that make him even more important? Well, he's got to stay on the floor. Dan Hurley understands that. Big guy begins and ends with him. Look at that, 73 and 47 here at UConn alone. Says this is the year. Well, year five is when you really start to not just get to the tournament, but to try to go deep. And he's got the, the players to be able to do that. White with the basketball. Boston coming off a win over Northeastern in their opener. Up a little short three from Britton Watts. Early believes his team will be faster. Sonogo. Now, you know, they've talked about that all summer. Sonogo's going to have a chance to shoot some open threes, and they want him shooting them. On the other side of this matchup, Joe Jones is in year 12 at the helm. Two 20-plus win seasons in the last three years, and he told us pregame, he still has nightmares <laughs> of being with Steve Lapis at Villanova when you were suiting up for the Huskies. Oh, I have that effect on some people. <laughs> Nightmares, my wife included. <laughs> Diara. The Texas A&M transfer. Part of his game he really has to, to work on. They need him 
to be able to knock those shots down. Sometimes when you transfer, you got to throw all your old numbers out, good ones and bad ones. Fresh start. Here's White. 27 points in the win over Northeastern. He was the best man on the floor. At this time, he was shut down by Naheem Ali. Yeah, too many moves. One move, a counter, and then you got to shoot that ball. The help's coming fast. Otherwise. Newton pulls. I don't like it. Long two, step back a foot and try to get three. One of my pet peeves in basketball are the long twos. If they're going to be that close, heels on the line. Just step back another couple inches. Terriers in need of a bucket. Zink trying to back on Sonogo. It's been that kind of start for Boston. Well, UConn has always done a nice job under Hurley of, of that one and done defense. You know, they don't give you a lot of extra opportunities. They gave up a couple against. Look oh, at Kurt Sonogo go. They gave up a couple Ooh. against Stonehill. And Hurley lets him know, but the defensive glass is where UConn should rule with this size this season. Six of the first nine for the Big East preseason player of the year, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, award finalist. Britton Watts, step back. Offensive board for Zink and the Terriers. White. 0 for 6 start for Boston. Love this. Take your time. Get a call from the sideline. So important to be able to run your stuff early in the season to get that comfort level up with the new guys. And the foul as Aline took it. Great start. Preseason Big East Player of the Year. Choice. Sonogo spinning, wheeling, and dealing. The whirling dervish. Pickens, his teammate. He plays <laughs> angry, mean, he's intelligent, he's hungry. Love that kid. Listen, you can throw Duke Timmy in there as well. Absolutely. Colin Castleton down in Florida. There's a lot of bigs across the country this year that are really good. What do you make of that for the sport? Listen, we know this as being a small man's game, small ball, but the big guys are still out there. You need size. You need rebounding, and the bigs today are different than they were even 10 years ago. They can stretch you out, and I like to call it my all-pick-and-pop team, and Sonogo's trying to join that. The bigs who can stretch out and shoot some jumpers a little bit. Redshirt freshman Alex Caravan is providing that as well in the front court. A bucket on the previous possession. He had 13 on Monday night. Joey Calcaterra, the San Diego transfers checked in. It's in to cling in the freshman. A little short. Yeah, just too fast. It's hard to, to really tell young guys when you catch it, take your time. You got 2.9 seconds before they pull the whistle in there. What can Boston do differently on offense? Take care of the ball. I mean, you're giving a very good team extra options, but spacing is always a thing that kills defenses. I think they've been jammed up a little bit, kind of anxious in each other's way. But when you have a veteran team like Joe Jones, you know, the message is easily relayed to these guys. Space out, stay, stay out of one of those way, and let each guy go to work. This is Walter White. Sixth year star for this Boston Terriers program. And during his career, summer ago, Walter White did an internship with Harvard to create healthy buildings for people. His mother is a social worker, a huge inspiration in his life. And mom taught Walter to treat other people well and give them opportunities, be good to others. That's how he looks at his life. And he told Joe Jones, basketball is important to me. But I want to impact people's lives. It's awesome to see young people in college trying to give back. You know, we always think we need money to give back. You don't. Time, to me, is the most 
valuable gift you could ever give anyone. Capera a little short. Caravan with the offensive rebound. Man one for Alex Caravan. I love this kid. You know, we talked about this Monday. You got a chance to see Alex Caravan was here last season, midway through the year, and love his emotion. Obviously, his basketball IQ is tremendous, got great feel. But also, he has trust of the coaches already, and I think that half a year here helped. You know, they got it's not just about the players learning how things work on campus and being a student and an athlete, it's about the coaches and if they can trust you in, in finding out what kind of character you have as a player. You know, I know it was you told me the other night, look, I have trouble remembering what I had for breakfast, <laughs> but first week of college yeah. for you. you you were telling me pregame, Coach Calhoun recruiting you different from Coach Calhoun first week of school and practice and all these things going on. Yeah, some coaches are like that. You know, some some coaches, they come in your house, they're friendly, they're nice, they're fun, and then you get to campus, they go, we got you now. And that's one thing Jim Calhoun told us. So we lined up, eight freshmen says, listen, you know that guy who came to your house and recruited you, that nice guy, the sweet old man? First day of practice, you will never see him again. <laughs> and let me tell you, <laughs> He didn't lie. We never saw that guy again. <laughs> You've seen him since your UConn flag days. Oh, yeah, a, a, a lot, a lot. I saw him uh, just last week, but as much as he would grind you down and, and make you work, you'd do anything for him. I would do anything for him today because he just gives you that foundation. A lot like Danny Early's trying to give to his guys, and Joe Jones told us before the game, foundation so important. Caravan clinging with the offensive board, a tower inside, and a highly touted recruit. I like the move. If I have to pick my mitts, though, John, he's got to learn at this level, and he will, to keep that ball high, get it at your chest. In high school, you could do that. You just didn't have strong enough hands to take it from you. Genezzi is off. The Terrier still without a made field goal. And yeah, you got to run some O, you know, you're together. You're not going to beat this UConn team. Going one-on-one. -on -one. Run your stuff. If you got something in transition, great. Give each other some room. Move that ball. Ball movement kills. Giveaway. They're fifth. But Terriers get it back. It's Brewster. Morales. Calcaterra a little bit lackadaisical with the basketball. The value of that thing, even this time of year, John. Caravan with another offensive rebound. Look at that. Off to Klingon with authority. How about the vision? I mean, the feel we talk about. We'll get a homegrown guy. And it helps your fan base. A lot of these fans in this building have followed him, even the students, for a few years now. So it, it just helps to the morale of the team as well and, and future recruiting. Tate. The timeout, so Nogo has checked back in. He's joined by Newton, Richie Springs, Diara, and Calcaterra. Again, Jordan Hawkins out tonight with a concussion. Andre Jackson still out with his finger injury. And now Samson Johnson out with a foot, so Richie Springs getting an opportunity. And a foul on Nevin Zink. <laughs> UConn using that size on the defensive end to disrupt. You see the 0 for 8 for BU, but on the offensive end, 14 of their 17 points are in the painted area. The sinks first foul. Austin still without a lead field goal. Those two points came from the line. Sonogo. Now has range. Just what you don't want to see if you're Joe Jones or, or anyone else around the country that's going to have to play UConn. Adama Sanogo heard about it all summer long, but look at this. The pick, the pop. Soft touch from the big fella. Sanogo from deep.
what were the elements of range, if it's consistent, yeah. do to opposing defenses, if Sonogo's got that? I, I mean, that's what I mean. It, it's game is scary, and, and the thing that I love about what we've already seen in the you know, small sample size is that Hurley's saying, look, I know he's got to play basketball after he leaves here. I'm going to allow him to do that. And with that, that means I got to let him step out a little bit. It's hard for some coaches to let go when they have still have players in front of them to let them play outside of what they were recruited for. So kudos to Danny for allowing that. Difficult start for Boston. Not a made field goal thus far. A team filled with experience. Their entire starting lineup made up of upperclassmen. They return 14 players from last year's team. 10 impact players that have seen some sort of time, but not the kind of start Joe Jones wanted. Into Sonogo. Will they double? Five on the shot clock. Newton is trapped. Sonogo. Spacing, that's all that was. When, when Sonogo catches that, Richie Springs has to get out of there immediately. Theater switches home for Fletcher Tynan. Love it, little fall away, a la Dirk Nowitzki. Tynan, one of three grad students. In the starting five for the Terriers. Several fifth-year players and the sixth-year player in white. They've got veterans and now trying to find a rhythm. Here comes Walter White to the cup. A couple turnovers by Calcaterra, and again, one of those guys who you want to be able to keep on the floor if you're Danny Hurley, not just to let him shoot threes, but you want him to be able to handle the ball for you, make good decisions, and then defend at the other end. So no go answers. He's into double figures. Look, I wasn't the best ball handler, but I knew if Danielle Marshall was anywhere around, give him the ball. That, that's how you stay on the floor. <laughs> give Danielle the basketball. You're going to keep him happy and Jim Calhoun. And how Danielle will pay you. You know, he just... I, I, I'm still trying to figure that out, John. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> talk to him about that. A little short for White. And and the other, the other night, when they beat Northeastern, White had open threes. They weren't under duress. That's the difference in those six threes versus tonight to misses. Opportunity knocks for Richie Springs. And if you're Richie Springs, all you want to do is get in there and be solid. You don't have to have a career night. Again, you have to show the coaches they can trust you on the floor. We'll take a timeout. It's Joe Jones. And you think about it, Donnie. This year, they go from Sonogo to a four-star freshman in Donovan Klingon. Yeah, but I got to be honest with you. I'd rather Klingon be on the floor than Sonogo. Of course. <laughs> He's still learning. His size, yes. He's going to be dominant at some point, but just no comparison to what Tenovo brings to the game. I will say this, though, in practice, into a couple of practices, they're spirited. Tenovo has a guy in front of him that he just can't overpower when Klingon's guarding him, and I think it's it's been wonderful for both of them. UConn players saying ahead of the season that they hope games weren't as hard as practices <laughs> because that's just the intensity level. Yeah. At the fifth year leader of the Huskies once they, they never they, they never are it, it, that's just how it is the best team you play against is those five guys if you're a starter than, than the five guys off the bench you're never gonna play against anyone better than that team every day in practice really telling us this is the deepest he feels his program's been as kind of as fouled by caravan it's his second I'll say this Danny Hurley's better than me because if I had depth I, I would say I would downplay it I, I wouldn't want to put any extra pressure on myself I'd say you know we got some guys we'll see how they work out but you're right he said we are deep this is the deepest team I've had and we asked him last week about earlier in the week about being that mad scientist how do you put things in the pot and not kind of overcook things it's a weird circumstance because he hasn't had to deal with all those challenges with Andre Jackson sideline, Jordan Hawkins now out with a concussion. Now Samson Johnson, he started on Monday night, and now he's out with a foot injury. So here you have 
three guys who theoretically could have started, Jackson yeah. and Hawkins for sure, all sideline. When we talk about players getting better and maturing and learning the process and how do you fight through adversity, coaches are doing it as well. I mean, this is, it's happening to Hurley right now. Playing in a tree, ace foul. <laughs> UConn made it official yesterday on signing day with a what they're billing here as a UConn Fab Five. Yeah, it's one of the top recruiting classes in the country. It's a little bit more dear to my heart. One of the players, Jalen Stewart, out of Seattle, is a relative of mine, so I was watching that closely. He's a part of a wonderful class coming in here. Monty Young, the assistant coach, has done a phenomenal, Luke Murray as well, both of them done a phenomenal job in trying to keep this culture of winning and championships going here at UConn. Follow on White. I'd be remiss if I didn't give Tom Moore a little love too on the bench. He was my coach, my assistant coach when I was at UConn, so. And he's got a great staff over there. They, they understand where they are, the history of this place, what it's going to take to get back to the Final Four winning championship. There's Tom Moore right there. Uh, really understands the mentality of his head coach. You know, he's a great calming kind of piece for, for Danny Hurley. You need those. Howie Dickerman was, and, and Dave Lato were the same guy for Jim Calhoun. When you see your coach getting ready to get thrown out of a game, you just go over and grab him. Tom as that calming force. Kamani Young in the offseason, if there was a list of rising oh. stars in the coaching ranks, he was on it. That was the biggest surprise to me that Kamani came back. <laughs> there were just there were jobs. He just decided, you know what? I haven't finished what I'm trying to do here at UConn. And all UConn fans are grateful for that, I'm sure. They want to bring a Big East championship home here. Nice White move. with a nice move. But the difference there is he had some space. His teammates aren't trying to crash before he shoots the ball. Give him some room to work. See how it works out. Aline, the step back. And a foul on Hendry that takes us into a timeout. Huskies in control on a Friday night. Dude, you coming? Because the only thing dripping should be dip the difference makers, especially now when you talk about the injuries that you spoke on earlier, John. Well, it's valuable time that they're gaining. I don't know if Klingon and, and Caravan would be getting this time if Hawkins and, and Jackson are on the floor. There's always that silver lining you have to look for, and I think you're looking at one of them right now through those injuries. Jordan Hawkins, Andre Jackson, very optimistic pregame. They were they're great. They were gunning to get back yeah. onto the court. They'd like to get back soon. Time table still to be determined, but yeah. the Huskies will have them back for the most important parts of the schedule. And when they told me individually when they wanted to come back, <laughs> I said, slow young fellow. We all we we listen. Jordan Hawkins wanted to come back as soon as he got off the ground, but you gotta take your you gotta take things serious, take your time, take care of that body. From deep. Love the no hesitation. Great job of kicking out, catch, shoot. And that's when you have to shoot it. When that recovery is, that gap is so far to run to from guys in the paint out to open shooters. And this Harper's been quiet thus far. A little short. We talk about where do they come from via the transfer portal. Raheem Aleem was part of an ACC tournament championship with Virginia Tech. So they know how to play at both ends of the floor without question here. Great defense by the big fella dumbing it up inside. And in transition, nothing. Initially swing the ball, drive the paint, and then find your teammates out of the perimeter. I, I love when you can go three and sometimes four guards, which Danny Hurley has the luxury to do now with these lineups. Just put so much pressure on the defense, so many options. Austin going with 
Britton Watts, White, Tate, Brewster, and Landrium. Otto Landrum, the freshman. Couldn't get past the no-go. Nice finish at the 10 by Damon Tate. Really nice, switching hands, using the left. I think that's the, the best way to play against a guy like Sonogo. You have to attack him. You have to take it right to his chest. Can't fear away or avoid the contact. You won't get the calls and you won't have a chance to score. And a turnover by the Huskies. There's what you were talking about, making it tougher for him to catch the pass. It's a pretty easy game. As players, we make it difficult. You know, how about just some more ball pressure? Stay up into guys, get your hands moving, shadow that ball, and it makes it a little bit easier on the interior defender. What was the thing when you were playing at UConn that you made too difficult? We, we don't have enough time <laughs> on the show for me to... It is just not... You might not have enough time in your life, John, for me to explain. Oh, my. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I was special. Let me just put it that way. I was, and not in the, not in the good way. <laughs> just got to be honest. There you go. Oh, got to finish at the rim. No reason to double pump. Tiara is fouled. It's what I love about this UConn team already that we've seen just in two games is they get downhill and the way to get downhill is you have three or four guys who can now get a defensive rebound and break out you don't have to wait to find where rj cole is or to wait to find where tyrese martin is four guys can bust out and start your break and in turn put pressure at the other end and get a chance to shoot a couple free throws hassan diara coming from texas a and m who made it to the nit championship game last year but he's familiar with this area. He's from Queens. And Dan Hurley wanted to get him to UConn because he knows that Hassan Diara fits the identity of the Huskies. Well, he's tough. He's got to work on that shooting to be more efficient. And, and he probably will. Well, guys like Sonogo, they help that. They help your numbers because now you're not stressing out trying to find baskets. They're easy when he's down low. Tate with his second bucket. Decisive though, good turn, getting downhill, attacking that rim. You have to be decisive against the team, the size and the strength of UConn. For a Terriers team that was down 20 to two, they've settled in a little bit. Three plus some five to go in this opening half. There's Newton. But now you have to get stops. You've scored a couple times, you've kind of found some seams at that end if you're BU, but how do you, how do you get defensive rebounds and how do you get stops? You have to do it as a unit. Gang rebounding, they call it, all together. Everyone stick their nose in there. That's the third foul on Landry. And Boston in the double penalty, which leads Sonogo to the line. He is quiet, but when the moments matter the most, he will speak up and get his team in line. It's the way Danny Hurley describes Adama Sonoma. It's nice to have a guy who can really lead with his play and, and then, you know, has the ability to say a couple of words. The guys that don't talk much, those are the ones you listen to the most when they do start to speak up. Shemezi. Sonogo stopped him. It's good possession, though. Good stop. Got to make shots. Austin still without a three. Diara. Again, put them together. You got a good stop. Come down, get a good bucket. Miles Brewster, the junior from Brooklyn. Austin Britton Watts. Feeds it off. Nice fake. And Chemezi was fouled underneath. And that's what I would be telling my teammates. If I was BU, I'd be telling them head fakes. Use your shot fakes. Especially in the interior. And, and you, all those one-on-one -on -one drills that you do in practice, they're great. But you have to make decisive moves. Shot fake, put it down, find a teammate or get to the rim. If you're inside, head fake, head fake, and then go up. He 
think about this Boston Terriers program, if you take out that wonky 2020-21 season mm. for the Terriers, you get a combined 44 wins. Joe Jones leading this program with CBI last season. They would have been going to the NCAA tournament. They won the Patriot League tournament in March of 2020. And, and you can see just in a couple of minutes we had with Joe Jones why players stay to play for him. They didn't talk a lot about basketball. They talked about character, doing things for other people, doing stuff in the community. What any parent would want to hear from a, a, a college basketball coach. We've got a timeout and free throws after the break. The Connecticut Huskies, 17, and their Gamble Pavilion opener. He is the junior from Mali and terrific kid, too. I know we, you know, so we, it, it, just because we don't say he's a terrific kid doesn't mean he's not, but he's just one of those guys that stands out to you, talks to you, looks you in the eye when you talk to him. Well, a lot of young players don't understand that. You know, they want to have their headphones on and kind of head down and go their own way. You, you'd be surprised at how many things you could learn and how many people you could meet if you just look up and pay attention. Sonogo understands that. It's amazing how much passion he talks about his roots with. Yeah. He really, <laughs> he, he loves his family to a different degree with the way that he talks about his pride for them, making them proud here in America. Terriers will head to the line. That fouls on Newton. And Anthony Morales. Uh, will step to the line. Second on Newton and seventh team foul. Two shots in the act for number 22, Anthony Morales. One of the things Joe Jones was telling us about is Morales a junior. With the majority of this roster being made up of upperclassmen, they have just three freshmen on this roster. Joe Jones said, we're really fortunate at Boston University. Great institution, even better people. And in this climate where everybody wants to go somewhere else, our best players have actually stuck around. Matone, the reigning Patriot League Player of the Year. Now a turnover forced by the Terriers. White gliding in. Great body control. Sonogo running, backpedaling. That's when you attack. I, I, that's a scores move right there. Ziara with a head of steam will head to the strike. Yara is a downhill player. You've seen that already a few times in this game. It's awesome to compliment that with shooters, and that's exactly what UConn staff has done this year. You can see it already just in basically a game and a half of how they really put pieces out there. So if there's a breakdown, listen, you can be the best rebounding team offensively, defensively, but if you can't make a shot, consistently from long range it's it's easier for other teams to scout you and defend and that's pretty much what UConn has been the last couple of seasons dominant on the glass now you add two or three shooters John and it's a different story that was the priority of the offseason get different perimeter options what the Huskies did with Aline Newton and Diara Bring Watts off the dribble. I love the offensive set. They'll be used. They're running their stuff. They're just a lot of front rims. Springs. Oh. Gets it back. Richie Springs making the most of his opportunity. Yeah, that's just a, an awesome veteran move a guy who's been around a long time and has not seen the floor a lot in his career but you wouldn't know it after this move catches it goes a little deflection there stays with it see how he keeps the ball high and then goes down and makes a power dribble that's just repetition good coaching instead of catching and bringing it down immediately 
holds it up. They reach for it. Now power dribble and finish strong. You're right. This is his fourth year with the Huskies program. And with Jordan Hawkins out with a concussion, Andre Jackson still out with the finger injury, Samson Johnson now out for some time with a foot injury. Springs getting some action as Calcaterra commits the foul, and the Huskies are in the penalty. And Dan Hurley. Well, you did talk about Tom Moore and Kamani Young keeping him calm. Oh, this is it. This is nothing. He's. <laughs> I thought he was taking a nap over there in that conversation. That's nothing to do. Yoga is a highlight for him throughout the week. He uses Sage to bless the court, if you will, at the beginning of the season. He did that earlier this week. We might have to work out some Pilates, meditation. We have to throw a couple other things in there, at least once the Big East regular season starts. He'll ratchet up a little bit. He'll ratchet it up a little bit. You know, Bill Raftery would just go to a bar. A bar or yoga? Oh. Not even, not, it's not even a, it's not even an option, is it? <laughs> There are many different methods of therapy He's, in the Big yeah. East. No brainer. Tied it off the dribble, and Boston U yep. is within a dozen. Yeah, you look up, and even at 29%, Hurley wants to talk about it. BU is, is hanging around, and that's what veteran teams do. Here come the Terriers. They're alive. Hurley's mind. How they cut into this lead, you know, keeping your intensity and, and keeping that energy level up. Not looking for that halfway mark heading into the halftime, and it happens. Can't get bored. Back to the bread and butter of the <laughs> I mean, that, That's and it could have been as simple as that. Give the ball to 21 the next time down the floor. One minute. One minute. Side to Malcolm Chinezzi. Doing work on Sonogo, but Sonogo defended him. That's a double double already in the first half for Sonogo. For Chimezzi, that's a, a tough one for the young fella to have to battle a guy like that. 14 points, 10 rebounds already for Sonogo. 10 on the timer. Here comes Sonogo to set a screen from Diara. Diara with six. Diara back to Sonogo. He's already made his first career three. Make it two tonight. That ain't fair. It's not fair. He is starting an All-American campaign. 17 and 10 in the first half. Harper with five. Harper, Sonogo with his 11th rebound in an emphatic first half for the Big East preseason player of the year. Tell you what. And his Huskies up by 17, but Boston, they found their way into this game after falling behind early. The start is important, though, for BU. White was the star with yeah. 27 points in the season opener win over Northeastern. Nice drive to the hoop by Jonas Harper. Yeah, Jonas bailed his best friend out there. Great relationship between White and Harper. White from New Haven, Harper from Stanford. Sonogo up to 19. Uh, just too easy. You know, comes across the lane smooth. Great release, the one-handed release. And you really have to do your work early with Sonogo. Just get in his way. You don't have to try to fight with him or grapple. You see him coming to a spot, just jump in front of him and stand there. You know, it'll bump him off. It'll bump up, you know, knock off the timing a little bit. Five on the timer. Walter White in his sixth year with this Boston program finishes over Sonogo. How about the jab step left? Misdirection and then a powerful right hand dribble to the rim. He could have had interested suitors in the offseason if he had elected to change his destination to finish out his eligibility. 
but he's using his super senior year to play for the coach he started with in Joe Jones. Nahima Lee swishes it home. Yeah, I love that ability to get into the lane, to, to have confidence. You get that from guys who have been there and played for big programs in the past. turn it over now Sonogo handling the ball that pass a little bit out of the range of his man but it was tipped yeah, look at this just coming across the lane great read there really terrific pass from the top and then the D in the three-point category steals categories trying to do it all showing us too much right now though John you got to save a little save some of this Aline catching fire to start the second half. And a timeout called by Joe Jones. Yeah, some miscommunication. Can't have it. First game that will be over on FS1 when the Huskies welcome in Oklahoma State. And then as you saw that road trip to Florida to complete a scheduling agreement between Connecticut and the Gators. That'll be an interesting matchup for Todd Goldenstein. Yeah, Colin Castleton, another seven-footer against Adama Are you kidding me? That I'm looking forward to that one as well. So much great size. The year of the big in college basketball. The, the year of the athletic big. You know, there are no more stiffs around. And even a guy is 7'4", Zach Eady. Purdue. I mean, you, you got some guys who can really play with some size and, and can move. Now seven on the timer. Tristan Newton. What a move. They just keep coming at you. Three guard set. And they have length and size. And look at Newton on the ball. He, he's a good 6'4, six, 6'5 six, in length. Lean kind of same way in the strong. Diara. White is foul. It's a blocking call on Sonogo. Just that I love the the awareness. Rip it through. Finish with the offhand. Reverse. I think that's the the hardest position on the floor. A lot of guys say their position is the hardest in the center, small forward. But let's let's. Be honest, that guard position, you're trying not only to appease your teammates to get you set up into the right spots, but you're also trying to make the coaches happy as well on the sideline. There's some pressure on these guys, being new, playing for Hurley, who asks a lot of his guys, and then playing with you know, a guy we're going to be talking about nationally all year long in Adama Sonogo. you got to make a lot, of, a lot of people happy. What's the pressure of following the UConn standard? As a player, you just kind of play. You understand what came before you, but you don't fully understand it until you're out of here. You know, for these guys, they got enough to worry about. They're not worried about the Donnie Marshalls and the Ray Allens and the, you know, those type Kevin Allen. You're not worried about those guys. You're worried about that guy standing on the sideline making him happy. The R oh, downstairs oh, oh. to Sonogo, but he Travel. traveled. I don't know why he hesitated. There's no shot blockers on the other side. Oh, and Adama go up. Look, it doesn't like prosperity. Oh, man, what is that? I'm, I'm go I, I got to kill him when I talk to him next. <laughs> what is that? It's a sign it, of a great player, right? That's the one thing he'll remember about it, tonight. That's it. It's the it, one thing. Really the easiest probably opportunity to score. <laughs> Find it. Got eight. Kind of nice little player. So they get into conference play. It's, a, it's another piece. You talk about Harper, you talk about White. Zinc down low. Tynan's another guy who can get it going. Now a steal by Ethan Britton Watts all the way. The Terriers just keep hanging in tonight. One thing that comes with wisdom and having an older team is pride. And BU has a lot of pride. They're hanging in there. Timeout UConn and Joe Jones is fired up. Look, you may be smaller, you may be on 20. We're on their way in the NCAAs before COVID knocked that out, but they fully believe with their experience, Donnie Marshall, they can go dancing. Look, they're working on 320 win 
seasons in the last four years if they can get 21 this year. They're built that way. They're set up that way. And Joe Jones, 188 wins at BU alone. Second only behind Dennis Wolf. 247. Dennis Wolf also a UConn Husky back in the day, late 70s. Sonogo with the left hand. It's, when just, it's, down. it's just too late. You know, you let him catch it with a foot in the paint that low. It, it's too late. It doesn't matter if you try to double. You almost have to throw a, a second guy in before he catches the basketball. He's got 21. White has 13. Off to Tate. Great release. Beautiful. Knew what he was doing when he caught it. And as Boston U gets more comfortable, when they stop looking at the score and they start playing basketball, they look like a completely different team than the team that started over. <laughs> they really do. Sometimes you have to do that. We're going to win this next four minutes. Seven on the shot clock for Tristan Newton. He's fouled. This is a, a just a tough matchup. He's just too deep. Two feet in the paint. It's too late. Three guys running at him, slapping at the ball. He's just so powerful. We know that. So athletic. You know that. The one thing they don't talk enough about is awareness. He knows where to be. You know, he's not posting up with his shoulders facing the bench when the ball's at the top of the key. A lot of young, younger big guys do. Those shoulders are square to the basketball to receive the pass. We remind all of you in America that Adama Sonogo didn't pick up a basketball until he was 14 years old. Yeah, uh, and, and it's probably, you know, that, that's a gift and a curse. You know, it's a gift because your body doesn't get worn down. You see that happen with a lot of players when they play from the early ages, nine, eight, nine. And also you're a sponge when you're younger, new to something. You just soak everything up. And it feels like he's still in that phase a little bit. Tate coming off his first three. Now pulls. That's the other part of the game that'll change for UConn with bigger guards, longer guards, more active, and, and more guards in general is rebounding. Joey Calcatara off to Sonogo. It was a, a, a really good catch and a tough pass. Left wide open is Tate. His second three. Oh, he's got such a beautiful stroke. Top of the key. Got to get some stops with your feet, meaning move your feet into position to defend, not reaching and slapping away, especially when you have a little bit of some momentum here. Now in a zone defense, have to communicate even more in that zone than man-to-man. -man. Oh, Sonogo has 25. And that's it. You got to... Walter White got stuck on the opposite side guarding no one. As soon as that ball goes to the strong side, you have to get around if you're that low man on the zone. You can't stay outside of the offensive player like Walter White did there. Morales, he traveled. And he's just too powerful down here. Good, watch this. Tough little catch, but he had his hands up ready, controlled it, went up strong, and then Walter White's got to get around, especially when it's Sonogo on that side. You can't lose sight. One guy you can't lose sight of is that that's Adama Sonogo. I don't care if you're in man-to-man -man or, or zone. Monday night you said he should be getting the ball at least once or twice or three times every two, three minutes. If he doesn't get the ball in a three-minute span, something has to change. Yeah, he, he just got to get a touch. That's all. And, and, and not only that, we haven't even seen what kind of passer he's going to be when he gains all that attention from all those touches. Right now, they're getting him the ball. It is at Boston University in the fight against the social injustices that we saw in 2020. Took it upon himself to help form an executive board. Take on those issues in the, the Boston University community in the area. He just embodies what Joe Jones program's about. It's awesome to have young people be aware of 
the climate around them socially. It, it really is. It, I got to be honest, as a 18, 19 year old, it's so easy to be narcissistic and worry about you and where you are and only you. So when you see these kids who now come up and they have an awareness of, of the world, it's it's so, it just makes you feel so good. It, it makes you feel like things are in good hands. You talk to these kids all the time one-on-one -on -one and try to get a taste yeah. of that mentality. I like to listen more than I like to talk, even though they're trying to find knowledge from the old man. <laughs> I love listening to the young people to see where they're going, see where they're headed. Calcaterra, they call him Joey Ooh. California. Is that what they call him now? Because on Monday you said, that's what I call him. So now it's they? Does it spread like that? Well, the Hartford Current picked it up. Oh, of course. The Hartford Current's always stealing stuff. <laughs> what Calcaterra. a time! The caravan he's fouled from behind. It's interesting how a, a three-pointer makes you feel now that you can do other things. Try to thread the needle, the dime, the caravan, but this is just great passing. Throw it across. Cling and great job. You see the defender up top turn his head, find your shooter, and that's so big. Even though he's done that a ton in his career, Calcaterra, to be able to do it in this uniform in front of this crowd, it, it's, it just adds so much to his confidence. It's going to help him do so many other things well also. San Diego transfer that has surprised. In the preseason, they were really impressed with his feel for the game. They thought he was a three-point shooter. They knew that he could supply perimeter shooting, but it's a pass like that that they've been yeah. going away by. But the way you stay on the floor with Danny Hurley is you got to play defense. It's great to be able to make shots, but you can't defend anyone. You won't be playing, and that's one of the things Joey's working on every day. Tate a little short. I feel like that's a common thread with Connecticut basketball. If you don't defend, you got it. Things ever done. Clinging with two hands. How about the pass? The deep penetration and the drop off to the big with his hands ready. From Diara. Deflection by Caravan. There are one of those guys puts his head down. We talked about it a few times already tonight. He gets his head gets downhill, gets his head up, and, and finds Klingon on the other side. It's so important for bigs when you're playing with multiple guards to always have your one, your head on a swivel. You have to be looking. Who am I going to set a pick for? Who's coming? down off of the screen and, and and the most important thing is who's looking for me who's gonna find me keep my hands ready head on a swivel keep those hands ready to receive a pass Ethan Britton wants the senior clinging with a deflection spacing it's it's been really the, the main struggle I believe for the Terriers all night long from the start of this game the spacing just breaks down to give guys room to work and to set you up. Caravan. Boys. And hits. It's a 12 nothing run for the Huskies. Did you call it? Sure. And one for Walter White. Let me just tell you, we are in the country. I'm just... I live about four miles from here. There are farms all over. The bank is not open <laughs> this time of night. <laughs> so Caravan just stole the keys or crowbarred the window something because the bank <laughs> banks are not open right now. Walter White, Walter White an efficient 6-9 tonight. Just his second free throw miss. To break up 12 straight. By Connecticut. Newton from Diara. It's something small, but it's a terrific decision because Newton turns that corner. Could have very easily dropped that ball off. You're in no man's land. Goes up, mine made up, knocks down a beautiful mid range jumper. White. With great hands on the break, he was fouled. You 
seeing a little bit of why the coaches love Alex Garaban so much. So aware of where he is, can score the ball, beautiful stroke, but defensively his activity, already kind of anticipating where that ball was going to come. Comes up with a steal. Caravan getting the start tonight. First of his young career. For this UConn team, Jordan Hawkins out tonight, folks. In concussion protocol after suffering a tough fall in Monday's season opener against Stonehill. So his timeline for his return undetermined as he's in that concussion protocol. You saw Andre Jackson looking to make his way back soon with the finger injury. Something little, but talking to him before the game, you, you can you can see in people's eyes when they've had a concussion. And he's alert and sharp and ready and bright. And sometimes you don't see that with guys who are still dealing with it on the sidelines. And he is, let me tell you, he's as talented as they've seen here at UConn in a long time. And I would compare Jordan Hawkins to... I'd say a cross between a Jeremy Lamb and a Rudy Gay. He's got the athleticism of a Rudy Gay, but he's got that length and, and the, you know, the, 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 the idea of I can be a great defender as well as offensive player. And by the way, Rudy Gay, co-biggies player of the year, freshman of the year when he was here, and, and Jeremy Lamb, not too bad of an NBA <laughs> player as well. So both of them long careers in the NBA. And, the, the problem for Jordan and, and Danny Stabs is how are you going to keep him here? <laughs> he's out on the floor. How are you going to keep him in that uniform? It's a good problem to have. Legal screen by Klingen. Jordan Hawkins. Just, just take a screenshot of that. See that little tiny, that little tiny cross necklace? Oh, four years, that thing's going to be four times the size and <laughs> ten times shinier. <laughs> that first paycheck hits different. It is. It is. <laughs> you don't really. You don't want to spike it. You don't want to spin the first one. Yeah, yeah, but how many guys don't listen to that? A lot of guys. I tr trust me. A lot of guys won't spin the first one because they don't realize it's real. The second one, different story. All gone. Never forget. All gone. Spanish. White's rejected. Josh Hart got his first paycheck after Villanova buys a car. Jay Wright goes, Josh, not all at once. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Woo! Whoa. Well. There's a roof still on this building. A foul call and an offensive foul, or else Klingon would have brought this house down. That's I'm out in stores. People remember ads with young people having a good time. So to help you remember. Ed, this might not be the place for you, and I'll help if you want to transfer. I will call schools and talk to some coaches and try to get you into a good spot. So basically trying to push me out. I imagine talking to some coaches around the country that that happens more often than not where you have to yes pull from the portal but you also have to push towards the portal as well because you want to set yourself up for a good program but you also don't want to forget about the kids who you recruited a year or two years before hard spot to be in right now for college coaches very hard what made you stay hard-headed hard-headed now my mom said listen you committed she said you you committed to a school you, you signed basically a contract that said you're gonna play there you're not gonna quit you're not gonna give up so from coach Calvin said last week from be, me telling you you got to go to playing in the NBA he said it's it's a terrific story but got to keep overachieving that's what that's what we do John Fanta he's Donnie Marshall it's great to be with you all from Gamble Pavilion on a Friday night. Walter White trying to keep the Terriers going. He's got 19. He's someone who has not transferred. He stayed committed to Boston. Yeah. Which is, is uh, again, every year you come in and you say, hey, he's been here more than two years. It's a surprise. It yeah. just is. Clinging on the run. Couldn't put it away. Yeah, that one you need to catch. Power dribble, you go up strong. Don't be in a hurry. That's the only thing I think Klingon has to really figure out when he gets his minutes is take your time. Slow down a little bit. Right here. You're off balance. Slow down. There's no one really around. And Zink's the next closest guy. Power dribble, go up strong. You don't have to be in a hurry. For all freshmen, sometimes that's the issue. 
Picked off by Britton Watts. Britton Watts. Well, the, the issue for BU is that they'll do that once every four plays when you need one, two, three to string them together and then, by the way, get a couple buckets at the other end. The fade pass from Caravan to Sonogo up to 27 points. It's just another level. You know, as good as Walter White is, Adama Sonogo is just, just a, a different level of player that he's seen, I'm sure, in his, his career. 12 boards as well for number 21 in White. Now 12 on the shot clock for Tynan. Tynan, Sonogo altered that. Somehow it went in. It was tipped by Harper. Yeah, such a smart play. Kept his eye on the ball. Thought he was going to go get a rebound. Just tapped it up and in. Look, this Terriers team, they've made smart plays throughout the night when they've had their moments. They have a combined eight seniors or grad students. They dug a big hole to start the game, and it's always hard to dig out and have the energy to dig out of the hole, especially on the road. We've got big games next week. Big Ten, Big East meeting in the Gavit games. Donnie, where do you zone in on on this slate? I, I, I mean, how do you pick? Honestly, how do you pick? I, I got to pick the games that I'm doing. So I, I, those are the ones that I'm looking forward to. But I think that Villanova-Michigan State game is is going to be something special. Izzo doing his thing. And all those games are great. It's hard to really, you know, I love those. Cross conference. We used to do the Big East ACC challenge, which is always awesome to be able to play guys like that when you really weren't playing anybody. That was the one game in the calendar you were looking for before you got in the conference play. Lean with three on the shot clock. Offensive rebound by Caravan. Here's Newton. Yeah. Those two guys have taken a lot of threes over their careers. Newton and Aline and See a lot more of those this season. White. Mm. Newton. The East Carolina transfer averaged nearly 18 per game last year. Terriers look to run. Booster can't connect. And it stays with the Terriers. Bringing it up. One week from tonight, over on FS1, you go from Indiana as Xavier, Sean Miller, a big test for him with the Big Ten front runners and the Hoosiers coming in, then Villanova at Michigan State. What a slate next week. Five on the shot clock. Chemezi gives it off to Bryn Watts. Back to back in and outs for the Terriers. And Brent Hampton says that went off of the team in red. Great fight by Diara though. Stuck his nose in, helping rebound. Love what I've seen from this UConn team tonight. Guys doing whatever they have to do to stay on the floor and to earn possessions. Into Sonogo, three shy of his career high, and a foul on the back end. It's on Caravan. Caravan was surprised. Thought he was undercut. Early, that, that look says it all. Take a look right here. That's definitely initiated by Brewster. Oh, it's, it's early in the season. Players miss shots. Coaches don't call great plays all the time. The refs, they're going to miss some. The thing about the refs, though, is they only miss one or two. Players, we miss 10, 15 coaches mess up 10, 12 calls. When you talk to Our players, refs don't miss a lot. When you talk to players, how much do you tell them, 
Stay friendly with the officials. Stay on their good side. Well, well now I know. As a player, I didn't understand that. I, <laughs> I was as furthest from that ideal as you could be. But now, yeah, you know, if the officials are people, too. You know, they're humans. They, they want the respect that we want as players and as coaches. They just play basketball. You, they'll let you do your job. You, you let them do theirs. Tony Chiazza, Brent Hampton, Mike Leon, our crew tonight. For more than four minutes to go, Nahima Lee. He can do that. Think about this. 166 three-point attempts his last year at Virginia Tech. 166 attempts. Give you an idea, R.J. Cole was about 170 last year, so he's close. I hope he's winning the ACC tournament in Brooklyn. Here comes Diara with the spin. He was fouled, and I'm going the line after our timeouts. The Huskies transfers, making a high impact in opening week. Team USA begins their world cultured. But that's the pressure coaches want. They want to have that. This is, you know, for the basketball capital of the world, as they're calling it. This is as good as it's been in a long time in terms of on paper, depth, athleticism, veterans, uh, potential pr pros that you have. So everything is falling into place. Now you get guys healthy. Again, how does Danny deal with being the mad scientist? It's a good problem to have, John Fanta. Not fun when those cupboards are bare. No. They've got plenty of options. Here comes Newton. Off to a lead. This was in rhythm, that's for sure. How about that? We got a double double and the rebounds are just falling to you and into your hands <laughs> at 20 feet 15 boards for Sonogo 27 points three short of his career high now with five it's Newton Tristan Newton Otto Landrum freshman Colorado. This is quite a welcome to college basketball. Mm -hmm. Threw it away. Chimezi had it earlier. Landrum next. You know, I like that dude. You can pull that dude off. Fanta. That, that hairstyle would be great on you. I'm not sure what it's called, but it would be great on you. It's like a pre-mullet. <laughs> pre it's like a baby infantile mullet. I love it. <laughs> Pre-mullet. Donnie Marshall, because you can get the best version of this mug, you are now my makeup artist and hairstylist the remainder of the season. Uh, fix your hair. Listen. And that will be the you, hardest job you do in your career. <laughs> you ought to listen to the guy who has no hair. That's just how it works. Right. That's how it works. I had to fix your hair earlier before we came on camera. <laughs> oh, boy. Sonogo got a rousing ovation. For his there it is. It's the pre I love it. Enter Otto Landrum on the power rankings for best hair <laughs> yes. in college basketball. He did just commit his fourth foul. Number 32 is So Sonogo, meanwhile, finishes with 27 and 15. More importantly, the end goal is the Joe Dirt. Right. Mullet. I mean, that, that's the end goal. That's yeah. the cream of the crop. I do like the orange. You know, I think it's got a. It, it, it's, when he's playing well, somebody is going to say he's playing this hair on fire. Yeah. Like, that's going to happen. They don't. You did. So maybe no one has to ever say that again. Actually, you know. <laughs> Hopefully, no one ever says that again. Uh, it'll happen. <laughs> Rest assured, it'll happen. Both these teams getting some reserves in here down the stretch. And this, folks, is what you get on a Friday night. <laughs> hey, the night is point game. the night is just beginning. Xavier hosts Montana next here on FS2. Then DePaul taking on Western Illinois. I know you're high on Sean Miller's crew. And Joe Jones, Brent Hampton has teed him up. Well, Brent's the wrong guy to do that with. Just there's, there's, there's just some officials 
you kind of want to leave him alone. I, I respect Brenton Hampton. He loves the game. He knows the game. He's one of those guys that you just don't, you know, not going to take it. But I understand as a coach, you, you need to get some of that frustration out somewhere. Year 12 at the helm. Only two losing seasons. He's had a really successful run with the Terriers. And a little bit of frustration. Frustration boiling over because had it not been for the first eight minutes of the game, this game could have gone differently tonight. He's still chattering, and now Tony Chiaz has basically given him that final warning. Newton. Silky smooth from Tristan Newton. He's got 11 tonight. Well, these guys know how to put that ball in the basket, especially from deep. 144 threes for him last year at ECU. I mean, it's attempts. That's that's what this UConn team needs. If you can to establish yourselves inside, which we know they can, Klingon and obviously Sonogo, the pressure it will put on teams to know that we can't just double down or even shade down on Sonogo because of the respect you have to show to the outside shooting. Ben Roy, the freshman from New Jersey. Getting on the board. Well, one of the big things as Andrew Hurley checks in for the Huskies that you said you were looking for tonight from this team, they went 5 of 24 from beyond the arc against Stonehill. 10 of 21 tonight. Got the Terra to clean in. Was looking for the exclamation point. I think what people are going to find about Don uh, McLean is how athletic he is, how well he moves laterally, and also rolling to the basket at 72, you know, some 260s, 270 pounds. Two shots. He plays every day for his mom, Stacy, who unfortunately died of cancer a couple of years ago his mom played college ball war number 32 Donovan is thinking about her on his debut night Monday and thinks about her everything he does on the basketball court her influence lives on well, he's got a, a, a wonderful following to Bristol just the boys and girls club follow him around they are his biggest fans chance to meet some of those people they love They'd love them some Donovan Klingon, that's for sure. And Hurley will work in some more reserves. Bring in all those guys who work hard. Gotten a strong following already. He's from Greece. Joined by Andre Johnson, as well as Hurley. The Huskies behind Sonogo tonight have rolled again. Buffalo comes in on Tuesday. Oh, McGlue, he's from Greece and has that game. How about that move after sitting on the bench for two hours? Yeah, that's hard to do. Speaking from experience. <laughs> it's hard to sit on the bench for two hours, go in and make a great move. Morales with the end one. Right, because you've been sitting around, then you finally get your chance. How do you wrestle with that? I've got to make my mark, or I don't want to do too much. Finally get some run. I don't want to tear anything. Achilles. <laughs> You're stiff. It's sitting over there. Sure. And the Huskies have Buffalo Tuesday, and then they'll host UNCW. A week from tonight, and the schedule will then ramp up Thanksgiving week when they head to Phil Knight Invitational to take on the Oregon Ducks. Nice move to the rim. Doesn't 
go for Irma Blue. And it's final seconds tick down. A big time performance by Adama Sanogo. 27 and 15 as the Huskies move to 2 0.